I'm Meredith Blackwell, and this is Keith Seifert, or is it Seifert? Seifert. I met Seifert. him years ago, and he called himself Seifert, but <laughs> his name is really Seifert, and he went to the, the Netherlands to school, and he learned how to say his name. That's anyway. the most important thing I learned. <laughs> no, come on. So, where were you born? You Canadian, you? <laughs> I'm a Canadian. I was born in Sudbury, Ontario, so a mining town. Very depauperate environment, you know, just totally degraded. No trees, all bare rocks. <clears throat> well, and there were no fungi? Uh, there, were, there were a few little mushrooms around. All, all, armillary mealy, I was killing any tree that mm -hmm. dared to try to grow. And, and you probably had lots of fungi you never saw in the rocks? Yeah, back then we didn't know there yeah. were fungi on yeah. the rocks. So yeah. The rocks were all black, but that was, that was the sulfur. Mm -hmm. uh, so where did, where did you grow up? In this mining town, but your family, did, were they miners? Or? No, my dad was an architect, but they, both my parents came from Saskatchewan. So they, mm -hmm. they came from farming communities, and, mm -hmm. and uh, every few years when I was a kid, we would go to the family farm in, in Saskatchewan. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, was, I remember walking in the wheat fields, and the wheat was up to here. You know, wow. I could barely see over it. And you, know. you saw the plant parasites? Or? Well, I didn't know about them at the time, you know, but I look back at the photographs of myself and I think about that, that the, yeah. you know, the rust fungi must have been there. Or... I do not remember seeing a, a fungus until I was in grad school. Yeah. Yeah, for a PhD. But anyway, so, <clears throat> so you grew up in, in a mining town in Ontario. Right. And then, though, you, you got interested in fungi before uh, you went to college? Or? No, not, not really. I mean, I, I, I can't remember having any awareness of it in mm -hmm. high school at mm -hmm. all. You know, I was, I was getting interested in biology. That was my, my family was very, uh, we were campers. We always went out to the parks on the weekend and, and my, uh, both my parents liked gardening. So, you know, biology was part of what, part what of surrounded life. me and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and in university. Um, so where, where did you go? I was at the University of Waterloo. Okay. Yeah. And uh, who was there at the time? Well, I, Bryce Kendrick was yeah. the mycologist there, and, and I ended up in that course totally by accident. Mm -hmm. It was just, I, to be honest, like I, I, I needed to bail out of, out of analytical chemistry. <laughs> and the only way to do it was to switch programs. And, and I ended up in biology, and I had to take that course. And Bryce was such a charismatic yeah. guy, and he actually cared about lecturing. You know, mm -hmm. the guy before him in the morning, he was an 8:30 lecture. This guy wouldn't even make eye contact with the students. He stared down at the overhead machine. And Bryce came in with slides, and he made jokes, and he talked about his research. And and it was just, it was really the first time that that biology and research biology came to life. It was, listening to him. It was long after you were there, but I remember Bryce having things at a meeting where I was for teaching, and then he yeah. did the textbook. And, That's right. And yeah. then a lot of us used his his uh, Animark book that he yeah. came up with at his very exclusive meeting. Um, a yeah. number of us didn't get invited, but I was um, a, a lowly offended, grad school. I'm sure. I yeah, was yeah. a lowly grad school. I didn't know what an Animark was. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so you you were after that time. I was after that time. So, so when I was in the lab, when I third and fourth year, Bryce was editing mm -hmm. the whole fungus at that time. So, I, and so he would talk to us about all the ideas and, and you know just the whole idea that here was a professor working on a book just astonished me. You know at the time, and uh, so the, it was a very he was a very. Uh, embracing kind of yeah. professor, you yeah. know, and, and his grad students were like, I look back now and I laugh at them because they were really typical grad students. They were passionate, they were working on something that, that no one cared about but them, but that didn't matter to them, you know, they, and, and they were looking for new recruits for the cause, right, you know, to, <laughs> to work on, on fungi, so. Well, someone needs to go out and interview Bryce. Um, I can remember talking to him one time about his life when we weren't being recorded. Yeah. But he grew up in a Salvation Army uh, kind of place. His father worked for the Salvation Army, he told me. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. that. 
Yeah, yeah and, and so that was his job, and, and that was their religion. And so it was a very different kind of life than I would have expected for Bryce. Yeah. Yeah. So then you went to the Netherlands. Right, I went to the Netherlands, yes. Why did I do that? Yes. <laughs> no, actually, me. first I went to the university. <laughs> they got their own questions. <laughs> I, 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 I went to the University of British Columbia first. Oh, so I didn't I, realize I, I, you I did were my master's a with, with Robert J. Bandoni, <laughs> yeah. who was uh, the mycologist at the University of British Columbia. And uh, because my, my family came from Western Canada, it was natural for me to sort of head in that mm -hmm. direction. And uh, my grandparents were in Vancouver. They weren't alive at the time I went there. but. Um, so I just had this attraction to Vancouver more than I had to specifically that lab. But but he ben, and Bandoni was a very different man than than uh, any of the professors I'd had before. He was very serious. We thought actually had a wild sense of humor, mm -hmm. but he never showed that to his students. And, really? and, uh, so and we had to call him Doctor B. I, I wasn't allowed to call him by his first name, but. But he had really good ideas, and he was very well respected by the other biologists in the department. That's important. Because of these ideas. He yeah. knew a broad range of things about biology and, and uh, biochemistry and mm -hmm. botany, and, and he, he brought all of us out into the field. So for him, field work was really important. And it wasn't just the fungi that he was interested in, it was anything. And uh, so every week we went out with him and and he would he knew what a lot of things were and and we would go back to the lab and spend the afternoon working on on what we collected and, and that, uh, that had a big influence on me and then he when it come came to uh, doing a PhD he told me um, that he would have accepted me as a PhD student but he thought it would be better for me to go work with somebody who was really interested in the kind of things that I was interested in. That's very generous. Yeah. A lot of people wouldn't do that. And so um, my PhD supervisor is sitting over over there. <laughs> <laughs> By the name no, of Rob he's not, Sampson. He's not listening. <laughs> Robert so, yeah. A. Sampson. <laughs> yeah, and I know you've interviewed him already, but... but uh, I, I had, there was there was him and there was Brian Sutton at uh, the Commonwealth Mycological Institute and there was Gary Samuels at uh, at that time in New Zealand. And so they, should we invite Rob over I so he know. can tell stories no. about your school days? No, it's okay. No, you're no. okay. Because no you, stories about you just you stories, want, but for over beer. You want to hear nice things, so he okay. so he would just come over. Okay. Still, so you're in school good. in in barn. It was in Barn at the time, Barn, as we said, and uh, as they said. In Cider, uh, as yeah, we say now. Yeah, it was, that was part of the beginning of my real education, you know, and, and one of the things you learn from your, you know, your supervisors become role models of a kind, and again, Rob was a very different person than me, and, and a lot of the things I've done since then um, come from him. You know, the, he, he was very... For him, communication of science to people who were not scientists was a very important thing. And I would watch him as he, as he was speaking with the people that came from industry or uh, when he was teaching uh, students, but not university students. These were students that came from companies and they needed to learn about fungal identification. You know? And that, that became very important to me. And then also this involvement with the, with the international scientific community, you know, this all comes from yeah. from watching him. We weren't things I expected to learn, you know, you, you think you're going to learn about fungi, and I did, but mostly right. I learned that on my own, because at, at CBS, was this institute at the time, I think there were 12 uh, fungal taxonomists wow. there, and all of them welcomed me, and, and so I, if I went collecting and I found something that uh, I didn't know anything about. There was usually somebody who was interested, and uh, and I was willing. To, they were willing to take me seriously, and and, and uh, so I collaborated a lot with a lot of them. And of course, you know Walter Gomes. You know, yes. so Walter wasn't was never my supervisor, but but we he ended up being also very influential in my my career. Yeah, and um, how did you get interested in indoor air? I, I was actually on a Sloan Foundation advisory committee and I knew nothing about indoor air fungi. Yeah. And here you were getting money from them. 
Well, again, that, that comes from Rob. When, when, um, so my, my PhD was in 1985, and in 1985, Rob wrote a paper. Mm -hmm. It was really the, the seminal paper in the, this field of indoor um, mycota. And uh, he pulled together all kinds of ideas from chemistry and from uh, food mycology and, and applied them to, to how we should be thinking about fungi in the indoor environment. And, and because I'd learned from him Penicillium and Aspergillus taxonomy, and my job with Agriculture Canada was agricultural fungi, but, but it was the same fungi basically that, ha that occur in food and in the indoor environment. Um, he was teaching this course in the Netherlands on, on indoor mycology and we thought that that would be interesting to try to teach that course in Canada. And so it took a while to get that going, but we taught it 25 times in Canada, wow. you know, through the years. And so the research part of it was, was kind of an accident, but the, the, the actual taxonomic part really fit into my job of working with mycotoxin yeah. producing fungi. So you were ready then when, when the Sloan thing came along. Yeah, I was think so. Was that a major funding uh, It was a lot source? of, it was it, actually, I, I should be careful how I express this, but no, I mean, this was fantastic um, yeah. for us because they were very generous and, and, and also they really wanted us to work with them. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a, a good mutual, mutually beneficial relationship, I think. And, you know, in terms of how my lab went, a lot of the people that came through my lab who were really good students and, uh, you know, were funded by that mm -hmm. program. So for me, it was It was fantastic. a very different modeling um, kind of situation than yeah. I, I, I knew because I was interested, I knew NSF and that was about all. Well, it was, they're yeah. really interested in public good research yeah. and it, and it was a private, Corporation yeah, or nonprofit well, foundation, corporation foundation, yeah. and and uh, as a, as a government funded researcher, you know public good is is what you think about, you yeah. know, and and the, the Sloan Foundation was that way. Um, they wanted to. Their mission was to emphasize that that microbes and fungi were a normal component of the environment that we lived in, the indoor environment, and that we should accept that, but at the same time do research to, to, to learn what was normal. Yeah. Because at that time, it was really the idea that there were all these harmful fungi, and then all these other fungi that we didn't know mm. about. And yeah, Paula so. Oshoski was really good, I think, at picking people that she knew would produce results. Yeah. yeah. Um, you just mentioned microbes and fungi. I would say fungi are microbes, but do you consider microbes bacteria mostly, or, or I just well, have trouble with this today because many things I see where people talk about microbes, they really mean bacteria. One of the interesting but, things about that program was the opportunity to work with bacteriologists mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. And so yeah, we would get into these kingdom-based biases. Mm -hmm. you know, which one was more important and so on. But I, I did get them, because they talk about microbes and they never talk about fungi. I know. And so I, I managed to convince Michael Eisen, or he, he just admitted, yes, fungi are microbes. Are microbes, you know? yeah. And, but I, I, I don't know, I tend to use the word maybe a bit sloppily. Mm -hmm. but, I just was curious, yeah. but there's sort of no guideline that I know of. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> You've been to Louisiana collecting fungi? Yeah, a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I remember so going around the swamp with you and, <laughs> and our dearly departed friend Bob Lickford and his students uh, out in the bayou in their yellow suits looking like creatures yeah. from another planet. Yeah, and they also collected yeah. a lot of pasalid beetles that trip, which got loose from their cages that night oh, yeah. and woke them up and they had to turn on the lights and they had a beetle hunt. <laughs> But uh, also, we worked on several fungi, maybe just incidentally, in, in common. And one of them was uh, an anamark of the Pixidiopera that I was pretty excited about that I had completely missed, although I'd seen it and done, because I'd, I'd watched development and had which, which one was that? The glio... Uh, Gliocephalus, mm -hmm. you'd seen that on Dom? Yeah. So mm -hmm. here's the funny thing. This week, 
here at this meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, on Sunday, this young guy came up to Andre. me. He's, no, no, oh, I can't. Ma one. Michael. Maybe, uh, Polish, yeah, 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 you're right. That's the one I'm thinking of. I'm mixing them yeah, up. Yeah, and so he starts talking to me about about that fungus, Cleusophilus, and oh. Pixidia offera. But at the same time, we have this fung a, a different fungus back in Ottawa, and we're trying to figure out what is this thing. And and the sequences have been coming in at us the last few weeks. So when I got here, we just had the ITS sequence, and it couldn't make any sense of it. And um, I thought, this reminds me, this result reminds me of gliocephalus, mm -hmm. you know. So I told Michael about it on, uh, on, on Sunday uh, when we're walking around in the forest. And then yesterday I got the, the other sequences, the 28S, to do the blast search. Guess what the closest hit is? Pixidia opera, opera, which is what I was starting to think. So I, I emailed him last night. I said, here, we need, we need you to look at this and see whether it comes mm -hmm. close to your Pixidia opera. But it, so anyway, so you, you have know, the, a photograph of it, a picture of it. There's, or, or? A, there's a photograph online mm -hmm. that student Jonathan is supposed well, to send me the too. link, yeah. and and it actually kind of makes sense in terms of this Pixidia offer. Where did you find it? It grows on wood. Okay. And it doesn't culture. And, mm. and now I'm thinking, well, obviously it's mycoparasite. You know, we we have yeah. to try some dual culture thing with yeah. it. But and uh, see we. The first one I saw came from wood, but inside beetle galleries. Right. Definitely a mycoparasite. Yeah. The only two I know that aren't mycoparasites were some that Walter had baited with sclerotia, and they seemed to grow in, in uh, exuding cultures. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was the only ones I know of. Yeah. And then more recently, there is a, a fungus that, well, I found it 40 years ago with Bob Gilbertson, we mistook it for a uh, <laughs> slime mold. Yeah. It looked like Bisseromelium, but there was something about it that didn't look quite right, but we brought it in. But it, it covered a huge area, a uh, riverine area, where there were a lot of oak leaves. And it was just all over the place. And so we called it the Mixomimic, but yeah. it took a while to figure out it was now called Tauromyces. But anyway, it's very neat. And after 40 years, we did get a, a DNA sequence. And oh, then we find specimen. out that Cypher had been there already. <laughs> been there already. But that, yeah, that was the fungus that followed me around from, from the time I was at CBS. Because yeah. it, it, Henry Descals, who is Spanish, sent it into the identification service, mm -hmm. sent it to him. and and. Uh, you know, Rob, Rob came with it to me and showed it to me, and so I kept that specimen. And, and, uh, and then it was found by this lichenologist in Spain, yeah. um, Xavier Lumona. That's who you worked with. That was a really nice study. And, and so he had this thing, and he knew it was a penicillium, what we mm -hmm. called then a penicillium. Yeah. And so it, that let us get cultures, that let us find the sexual state. And uh, yeah. yeah it, so, it, Fungi are like that. You I know. know. They, and they've just followed they you around. They, well, and they pop up, and then yeah. you don't see them for years. But I, I wanted to ask you, too, you said you were interested in international mycology, and you've been president of IMA, the association that is uh, responsible for this nice Congress. Yes. The International Mycological Congress 11, being held right. now in Puerto Rico. So how's yeah. your... Your four years then. It's it's been a challenging four years. You know, you you can imagine like with what happened with the hurricane last year created a lot of anxiety about uh, you know not not just the well-being of our colleagues here, but how this meeting yeah. uh, would turn out. Sure. And, and you know, it worked out really well. So yeah. they, you know, in the end, worrying is just part of the job. But. Um, I, I, I think as a person I was always interested in, in people from other cultures and uh, other countries and, and, and so I, I really, that's been a very precious thing about my career in general is that it's given me the opportunity to travel so much and to meet people from other countries and, and, and try to understand uh, where, what kind of situation they come from. And, and, and you know, I went to India as part of this uh, presidency of the IMA. They invited me, and and I had the chance to work in a in the lab for two or three days with some Indian students and see what they have to contend with mm -hmm. to do a lot of the things that we take for granted in our labs, 
things like incubators, you know, where you need a, a power supply, you know, there they, they might turn off the power supply at night, you know, and yeah. then the incubator doesn't work. And, and uh, the, the arthropod contaminants of cultures, the mites, you know, there's, there's, mm -hmm. you go and into no these labs, 80s. there's just mites, yeah, no minus 80s, you know. To them, the, the, the balcony of the lab, the outdoor balcony was their incubator. Mm -hmm. You know, they stuck stuff out there and the temperature's going between, uh, you know, maybe 27 in, at night up to about 45 during mm -hmm. the day. You know, it's, it's very humbling, but you also realize how privileged you are in our world mm -hmm. that we don't have to think about things like that. But at the same time, they're working on solving local problems as much as they can, you know, so. Yeah, I heard a woman the other day talking about some of this in the Middle East, uh, how they were trying to help solve local problems, uh, pollution, sewage, that kind of thing. And <clears throat> someone suggested maybe fungi could be used. Yeah. And, and somebody at the end of this talk. So it was very interesting, yeah. So, what have we left out? Anything? I don't know. <laughs> have you said? There's the, the, no, I mean, there's always more to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I know there is. Yeah. Any burning issues? No, I, I you know, I, I, the only thing I'd want to say, and it's, it's the way I'm going to close this conference, and, and, and uh, that's the talk about how important it, uh, the relationship between people is mm -hmm. that, that science is an activity of humans and, and uh, we tend to think of it as this cold analytical um, process but in the end it's done by people and and f for me as much as I love the science part the, the relationship with the people part is what really makes it special to me and and to come to a conference like this where you have the, you know, it's funny to be the president and come here and, and people look at you as if you're a different person. You're really you know, special. You're some special yeah. person, but I'm not a special person. I'm just a guy. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, But the privilege is that, that the people who aren't shy do come up to me and they talk to me and they, they show me what they're doing. And sometimes that's really exciting. You know, I've mm -hmm. had some very um, illuminating conversations with people I've never met before in the last few days, you know, and they're, they're happy and I'm really happy that they've come up and talked to me. And, uh, but to close so. with what you just said, I had a, a very good friend who was really about um, an organic chemist, I guess, and he always would be furious when people would talk about my laboratory. He said, it's the blokes <laughs> in the laboratory, and that's really right, the mycologist in the lab. Yeah. So, and I think this is a nice field for that, actually, because yeah. I think mycology, especially with the field component, mm -hmm. is a very social thing. You know, you walk around um, with people for, for a few hours and you talk about mm -hmm. your life and your yeah. work. and, and uh, The field, meaning the yeah. forays and the yeah, that's field right. trips. Yeah. 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 So, well, thank you very much. All and right. Congratulations. All right. And thank we look forward to <laughs> your you for final talk. Me in this.